Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral researcher based in Vienna, Austria. And in this video, I want to discuss the Withings ScanWatch. Now the ScanWatch will be officially released in a few weeks, but I was able to buy one from the Insider program, which meant I could get it a few weeks early. I've received the watch two days ago and I've run a number of tests on it. And in this video, I want to discuss a couple of things. First, I'm going to do a quick unboxing and setup of the device. Then I'm going to show you an overview of its capabilities and some of the limitations that I've noticed. I'm gonna do an accuracy test of the heart rate measurements, and then I'm gonna take a quick look at the quality of the sleep prediction. As always, I don't wanna waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. I bought the ScanWatch from the Insider program where they only had a thousand units available. In the end, I chose this 38 millimeter black version, but they had three more versions. Surprisingly, when I bought this version, the price was set to $499.95. However, they quickly changed that to $279.95 before it was even sold out, which is now also the official price listed on the website. The larger version comes in at $299.95 euros, and I suspect it's the same in dollars. Let's have a quick look what is inside the box. I'll keep it brief. I'll try to go through everything really quickly because I don't like these really long unboxing videos, but I do think it's kind of cool to know what you get and what it looks like before you buy it. So let's see. So within the main box, we have this brown box that actually contains everything. And when we open it, we see that there's this gray pouch inside. Now, the first time I had some trouble opening it, but there's this nice elastic band around it, keeping it all nice and snug. And inside the gray pouch, we actually have the watch and we also have the charger. Now, looking at the watch up close, we see that it looks very similar to some of the other Withings products, but I really like the design. And finally, there are some booklets that can help us if we get stuck with the setup process. So there are several things included, the first one being the pouch, but honestly, I wouldn't really know when to use it because I will just wear the watch. The watch being the main item, and of course, we also have the charger. The whole setup process is completed within the Withings app, so make sure you have a compatible device. And as you can see, the scan watch is already at the top of the list of possible watches that you can add. Now, I found most of the setup process to be pretty self-explanatory with a few exceptions. So first you have to wake up your watch so it can be paired to your phone. That went pretty fast for me. So now that it's detected by the phone, we can start pairing the watch to our phone itself. And you do this by a six digit number that you see on your watch and you have to enter this number on your mobile phone. Now, after that's done, the watch actually starts updating, which is pretty nice, which means that over the lifetime of the watch, it will stay up to date. As you can see, my watch handles were not perfectly positioned at noon, and this is also something you can tweak. And finally, there's also the bottom watch handle, which tracks your number of steps, which you can also tweak to be in the perfect position. So at this point, the watch is almost completely set up. The only thing you have to indicate is on which arm you're gonna wear the watch, because that's important for the ECG measurement. So now that we're done, we just need to make sure that we wear the watch the right way, so we can take advantage of all the cool features. So what are the features of the scan watch? Well, it can actually track a whole lot. It can track your activity, your sleep, your heart rate, your oxygen saturation levels. It can detect breathing disturbances and it has three electrodes to provide an ECG. Now let's first have a look at heart rate, which is something I was already able to test. And I did this by comparing the scan watch against this Polar H10 chest strap, which is considered one of the most accurate ways of tracking your heart rate for a consumer. And I wore this device to bed for two nights to track my lower heart rates. And I used it during sports, during weightlifting, which is sort of medium intensity, so medium heart rates, and during cardio. So that way I have the whole spectrum of heart rates to test the Withings device against the Polar H10 chest strap. And here I've plotted the results of that analysis. So on the x-axis, so the horizontal axis here, you see the heart rate according to the Polar H10. And on the y-axis, you see the heart rate according to the Withings. And this diagonal line here in black would be perfect agreement between the two. Each of these dots here is a single heart rate measurement. And as you can see, in most cases, they agree pretty well. On the bottom here, you see my heart rate during sleep. This is my heart rate mostly during weightlifting. And on top here, you see my heart rate when I was doing cardio. In most cases, these agree really well. So they nicely follow this diagonal line here. However, there is a cloud of heart rate measurements here where the Polar H10 and the Withing scan watch do not agree. So in most cases, it seems like the scan watch can detect my heart rate pretty well. So everything along the diagonal here. 
but there are some cases where it detects a too low heart rate. So I really wanted to see why that was. And it seems to be that when I had a really high heart rate here, it often detected about half of the heart rate that it actually was. So let's look at it in a bit more detail. To do that here, I plotted my heart rate over time during both the cardio workout on the left here and my weightlifting session on the right. So I actually did my cardio workout in about four segments where I would cycle for about eight minutes, take a short break, cycle again for eight minutes, take a short break and so on. And that's four times. And this is what it's supposed to look like. But if we look at the profile from the scan watch, we actually see that it's missing this first peak. So in my first seven or eight minute cardio section, it actually detected about half the heart rate that it should have. But for the others, it detected it perfectly. So it didn't get random heart rates wrong. It really got a consecutive set of heart rates wrong. And after that, it got it right. So maybe once it thinks you're at a certain heart rate, it has difficulty switching to double. Or maybe at that point, my watch was just slightly differently positioned. So it had more difficulty detecting my heart rate. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the accuracy of the heart rate. The scan watch can also measure an electrocardiogram or ECG, which basically checks if the upper and lower chambers of your heart are in rhythm. If it detects they're out of rhythm, this is an indicator of the heart condition arterial fibrillation or AFib as you might know it from the movies. To measure the ECG, the watch needs several points of contact. And the first point of contact is at the bottom of your watch, touching your wrist. And for the second point of contact, you have to touch one finger on the rim metal of the watch with the other hand, which I think is similar to a one lead ECG, with your right arm as the negative pole and the left one as the positive pole. The scan watch also uses pulse oximetry to measure your oxygen saturation, which is basically the amount of oxygen in your blood. Pulse oximetry is a non-invasive method of determining oxygen saturation, also called SpO2, by measuring the absorption of different wavelengths of light, which undergo absorption by either red blood cells with oxygen or red blood cells without oxygen, also called oxyhemoglobin and deoxyhemoglobin. To put it simply, typically you shine light at different frequencies through a finger, toe or earlobe, and depending on what you detect on the other side, you know how oxygenated the blood is. This is very commonly used in hospitals and you can also buy these devices for home and it's called transmittance pulse oximetry. However, the scan watch uses what is called reflectance pulse oximetry, which uses a light detector located adjacent to the emitter to measure the backscatter of light. However, the principle is similar though the accuracy is sometimes debated. The scan watch is also able to pick up on breathing disturbances and it does this using the heart rate sensor, the oxygen saturation sensor and the motion sensor. And this can be used to detect things like sleep apnea. In order to use this respiratory scan feature, the scan watch has to measure oxygen saturation levels all night long to identify when levels are inadequate because of breathing disturbances such as sleep apnea. However, this also brings me to the limitations of the scan watch. They market it as having a 30 day battery life, but in order to reach that, they limit the number of measurements that it does. Heart rate is measured roughly every 10 minutes when not doing sports, which is much less frequently than for instance, the Fitbit, which measures your heart rate more or less continuously. Also, even though they had this screen capture out that shows that oxygen saturation can be measured continuously throughout the night, I did not get these results, even though I have the always on feature for the respiratory scan enabled. So all the oxygen saturation measurements I have so far, I activated manually, though this continuous feature might be something they will activate in the future. Finally, there's sleep tracking. And as you might have seen in some of my other videos, I've often compared consumer devices like a Fitbit or an Aura Ring to a professional sleep EEG device. Now, I've not been able to do that yet for the scan watch, but I'll do that in the future. However, looking at the first two nights, I can already say two important things. First, the scan watch can only predict deep sleep and light sleep and not REM sleep. And REM sleep is arguably one of the most important to track sleep cycles. So that's one major limitation, which will mean that anything that was REM sleep will be predicted as either deep sleep or light sleep or awake, which means all of these will be overestimated. And second, the scan watch predicts way too much deep sleep for me. So I doubt that the results will be super accurate. I don't know if all the REM sleep is taken as deep sleep or what's going on, but just looking at the percentages, I can already say that it predicts too much deep sleep. However, two nights might not be enough to draw an actual conclusion. So I'll do a proper test in the future. Overall, I think the scan watch holds a lot of promise. It looks really great for a fitness tracker and it has a lot of different sensors that can measure many different things. However, a lot of these measurements will not be important for everybody. Things like an ECG or oxygen saturation are really only important if you're at risk for AFib or for sleep apnea. For those cases, Withings has cheaper alternatives in their lineup that look arguably even better. Myself, I'm just crazy about data and data analysis and finding out new things about myself. So I am definitely going to keep the Withings scan watch.
Normally my scientific tests of different devices are more in depth. So if you're interested in that, for instance, in the Aura Ring or the Fitbit, consider watching my other videos. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing to my channel and giving the video a thumbs up. If you do that, it also makes it easier for other people to find my video. Anyhow, thanks for watching. If you have any thoughts, leave it in the comments below. Have a great day and see you in the next video.